Well, I'm Polish, but I work in Copenhagen. Oh, okay, so uh, an international personality. <laughs> so please sit, and uh, I think we can begin. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Um, today I'll be speaking about so-called agile data science. It's actually a term that I just learned about. Um, here's a very short outline of the, uh, of the talk. I will focus on uh, what agile data science is or may be and what agile data science is not, more like with examples what I think does not belong to uh, Agile Data Science, and it's not based on some sort of textbook knowledge, um, well-developed practices, and so on. It's more my personal um, opinions, views, based on experience. Um, I've been working with data for quite some time now. It's been like 15 years, more or less, in various scenarios, both in academia and in the industry. Um, as a data scientist, as a lead data scientist, but I also have experience working in the software engineering industry or software engineering roles as a senior software engineer, including um, high profile companies like Yahoo, for example, where we do use uh, agile techniques. And now I see these two different worlds, agile software development, but software development having really nothing to do with what data science is. Of course, software that handles data in some way, it can be big data, so huge amounts of data that are thrown from place to place, but they are not um, analyzed, so it's not data science. And on the other data science where we look at the data, but don't really develop production quality software. And these are two different worlds and suddenly they come to, uh, let's say, not, not collision, but it might be a collision. So there is some sort of overlap. And let's try to um, discuss, investigate where it is. And as I said, I haven't heard the term Agile Data Science before, before this conference. I was asked to, to come and talk to you about Agile Data Science. So I started to investigate. And what you do if you, if you are supposed to talk about something uh, which you might um, have good, good ideas about, but you haven't heard the term, well, you just jump into Google and you search for these things and you collect stuff and you uh, revise your slides. So this is kind of like agile way of, uh, of researching on the topic, which might be uh, seen as an agile data science. And uh, let's see at some numbers. Uh, when I started researching on this, uh, it turns out that, of course, agile, which has been out there for, for uh, decades, right? So we were talking about agile um, in, in, in 80s, in 90s, in, in later. So there's a lot of hits. Actually, I was surprised that the number of hits is that low. So just around 80 million hits uh, on Google. Data science, which is um, which has a growing trend, and I will show it to you uh, in a second as well, is uh, is on the on the same order of popularity in, in in Google searches, but slightly less actually. So it's just around 10 million hits or 13 million hits. Now, when you look for Agile data science is just 20,000 hits, which is very little. And what it tells me is that it, this term is not really in popular use. So it's, it's a new concept. And it's new because, again, th these two worlds are kind of still pretty much separate. There's, of course, a very um, increasing trend on using data, like you think Facebook, you think Google, all those companies that shout about big data and now also uh, machine learning with big data and so on. But um, how agile it is? What does it mean to be agile in this world? Let's try to see. Um, looking first at agile, since you are at the um, Agile Tour conference, I presume that you all have either some notion of agile development or you actually are pretty uh, experienced with it. You're experts. We are not going to touch specific um, agile methodologies like Scrum, Kanban, and so on, because this, the details are not so interesting. It's about the concepts. And um, well, agile is about, some people say, agile is about the speed of development, speed of delivery. But it's not just the speed, really. It's not how quickly 
you can deliver something from the start to the end. It's about how quickly you can change the direction, if need be, because of uh, business needs, because of budget needs, budget cuts, for example, because uh, your data, in the case of data science, does not show the patterns that you would like to see, that you suppose there are in the data, so you don't want to invest too much time in going one direction. So that's agility. It's about moving across the field um, in short steps and changing the direction, adapting the direction as needed. And that's kind of a problem in traditional data science. If you worked at the academia, you know that typically you, uh, you make a plan, you want to uh, investigate a problem, you want to write an article, and from the start to the end, it's more or less straight path. Of course, you can have some obstacles, and you may to uh, rediscuss the approaches. You may to uh, rediscuss, uh, especially if you have collaborators, what sort of experiments they should do to add more data to you, to your uh, analysis. But still, um, it's it's more of a waterfall actually uh, way of doing things. And now these people who work in academia, they come to a company and they are supposed to do things in, in the agile way. And it's very difficult because they don't think this way. You need to teach them, you need to convince them that you're not working towards paper, you're not accumulating lots of insight that you will publish. You need something now. You need something within two weeks, not as a ready-to-ship product because that can be very difficult with data science, with database products, uh, projects. But you need um, something just even for internal marketing to show that your team is doing something. Your team is actually working and delivering even in small iterations. And um, from my experience, both on the side of the a data scientist, so bench person who is actually doing the data analysis, and um, uh, a manager, I manage a team of data scientists and software engineers right now, and it's very difficult to change the mindset, both yourself and your people. So in Agile, we are typically uh, focused on short iterations, delivering some sort of uh, prototypes, MVPs, minimal value uh, products, that are not optimal, that are not necessarily uh, fulfilling all the all their requirements, but can already be used in some way, can already be either pushed to production or pre-production and improved iteratively. Um, in data science, typically the thinking is, well, I need to read more, I need to get this article, that article, uh, experiment a little bit. So on the way, it's difficult to show um, well, maybe it's easier to show progress of the work, but it's difficult to show production, delivery. And I was looking at the trends of Agile. It's, uh, as, as, as we know, this uh, sort of approach methodology has been out there for almost for ages in the internet sort of scale of things. Um, what is interesting is well, there is a little bit of a growing trend in popularity, uh, but what is interesting is that just before Christmas, uh, people stop being interested in Agile for whatever reason. It might need to be investigated in some way, but um, if we look at what happens with data science, well, we see the trend is growing, actually. It's a different uh, slope here. So from uh, a couple of years ago, we, uh, with the popularity of data science, uh, searches for data science, for what data science is, grew by, let's say, um, four times, more or less, because we had, we have 100% here and 25% here, so it's four times, four times growth in interest. And we do have some of the Christmas effect here, uh, but what was more interesting is actually this annual trend of bump in popularity after vacation. Uh, which you can see here, there's a bump, there's a bump, but in the recent years, the bump is here and then the trend stays. 
um, which says it probably is connected to students, to people who either join the academia to learn about data science or people who leave the academia and want to uh, start a job in data science, so they search for data science jobs. And that's why we have those keys uh, with data science. So this kind of role, a data scientist, is becoming uh, a very popular, it's called the sexiest job of the 21st century. Um, the problem is, again, that people who leave academia with some knowledge, experience in data science, they, they don't work the way agile teams in companies do. Uh, and I can see it, that's the way I was thinking uh, when I left academia and uh, went for the um, corporate life, or, or maybe more like startup life, but at least in, in the industry. So you, 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 you see a long-term road towards a publication or, or some sort of scientific results. But when you come to, to the industry, that's not what you want. You need to deliver very quickly and you are not interested in or at least in um, let's say small to medium sized companies you're not interested in some stellar scientific result something that will blow off scientists you're interested in something that will immediately improve your business and it can be something very simple and we'll be looking at um, some examples of discussions with data scientists that I had um, data science itself, I bet you're, uh, you're somehow familiar with what data science is. There is some confusion between um, data science, data engineering, data analytics, or so business analytics. And I will come back to, to, to this a little bit more when I, come, when I discuss the uh, structure of a typical uh, data science team or an ideal data science team. Uh, but in general, well, data science is about looking at the data, so getting the data, um, uh, transforming it in a way that, that uh, helps running experiments on the data, that helps uh, doing statistics on the data, that helps feeding the data into your favorite machine learning uh, tool, for example. So there's lots of things that you do with the data before you actually analyze it or look for insights. And then it's uh, exploratory data analysis where you, where you look at the data. It's essentially like staring at the data. And it was, of course, it was much more feasible in the old times where your data consisted of a table with, say, 50 rows and 50 columns. Now the data is really massive. So it's very difficult to stare at the data. Uh, but you use different uh, data reduction and visualization techniques to be still able to to uh, to see with your naked eye without any algorithmic insight first to see what might be there in the data. So some sort of um, um, manual hunt for uh, for information for for insight in the data, and then you decide how you want to uh, analyze the data so that you have results that are not based on intuition on how the wind blows, but on actual numbers, hypothesis testing, for example, um, and other indicators of, of how your model may or may not perform. So you start building models. If that's typical for uh, predictive analytics, where you have some bunch of data, typically some historical data of something that happened, let's say, uh, in the past month or the past year. And then you um, decide on the form of the model. You run the data through um, either some statistic inference process or you, or you apply a machine learning tool, which in some way, either analytically or iteratively, uh, goes through the data and uh, estimates, optimizes parameters in some sort of formula that then, after the learning phase, can be used to predict the future predict the outcome in general for some unknown input or input that is not used for learning. Um, and of course, there's a lot of, uh, lot of quality checking for the models. So it's not just to run your favorite learning algorithm and claim, well, I have learned a model, I can use it now. 
you also need to check whether the model is valid. You, you, you use different techniques to validate it against unseen data to make sure you're not doing something like overfitting, for example, so you have a model that is perfect for your training data but has nothing to say about data it hasn't seen thus far. Um, visualization and so on and so on. So more or less data science is about getting insight from the data. That's a short summary. Um, and th there, there's a lot of different skills that a data scientist needs to have and more generally um, a data science team needs to have. And one of the main points that I would like to make at this, uh, at this presentation is that <coughs> is that um, it's not really about a data scientist as a single role and not meaning just one person but as a single role. So you can have three data scientists but if they are all more or less um, within the realm of data science it's still a team that might not deliver in the agile way because we need a lot of um, surrounding skills in software engineering, for example. Uh, my experience with data scientists is that typically they can do some coding. They can, they may be pretty uh, good at, say, using um, an IPython notebook or R, which provides a lot of libraries for analyzing data for uh, uh, doing machine learning and so on, but it will never be close to production quality code. So when we think agile, when we think about being able to develop minimal value um, products quickly, a data scientist alone, unless you are very lucky and get a person that has a lot of experience in both software engineering and data science, a data scientist alone will not deliver in the agile way. That's, that's my experience and um, I think this is one of the major points that I would like to share with you so that when you think about having a data science team uh, in your companies, don't get into the trap of hiring a data scientist and thinking he will do everything by himself. That's just infeasible in absolutely most cases. Um, it is said that a data scientist is a better statistician than most programmers and a better programmer than most statisticians. Uh, and it might be true. The problem with this is that a data scientist is also a worse programmer than most programmers and a worse statistician than most statisticians. Uh, and I say it directly from my experience. I worked in a relatively small data science team um, at Yahoo and we had a statistician, a proper statistician, and we had a proper software engineer, and then we had myself. I had no idea who I am because I was way worse than the statistician and I was way worse than the programmer, and I was perfectly in between them, uh, but I was neither of them. And together we were able to play very nicely in quickly developing um, a pipeline for feeding data uh, from, from our search engine to the uh, to the grid and then running uh, massive analysis on the grid, which I think would be uh, kind of difficult if there were three of me instead, because we would have too little software engineering support. I can do a lot of programming, but I'm not a proper software engineer. And we would have too little of statistics support. I can do analysis, I can run stuff in R, I can uh, do modeling, I can use different, uh, let's say, Java-based machine learning frameworks or C++-based machine learning frameworks and so on, but that's still not the deep statistical insight that is sometimes needed to, uh, to really provide an optimal product. But again, uh, you don't necessarily want an optimal, optimal product right from the start. You want something of minimal value to be visible to the stakeholders so that they don't cut on the team because the team is not delivering. So a proper data scientist will usually work more like long term. It may take months before you get some delivery. And to speed it up, that's one of my arguments, to speed it up, you really need to combine the team 
uh, with, with proper software engineering. Um, so a little bit about what agile data science is or might be in my, in my view, in my feelings. It's about the delivery, of course, it's like in Agile, we want to be quick in, in iterations and deliver stuff on the way. So it's about delivery of um, insight, predictions, efficiently. And this efficiency comes not just from the data science insight or statistical insight. It, this delivery comes also from being able to quickly hack up, and I'm saying hack up in the sense of build something that can be presented as, as software, but of course, ideally, it would not be hacked, it would be properly engineered. But um, my argument is that we do need to efficiently deliver in short iterations, and that's why we need um, support from the software engineering. And that's also why we need to very often, or most often, start with what is already available to us. So libraries that provide functionality uh, for, for statistics, for, for um, learning, machine learning, and so on. And the simplest models possible that are reasonable to start with. Um, I make this argument later when discuss some of the uh, feedback that I get from data scientists, which I will mention in a moment. Um, and to do agile data science, what is also important is that you have the right infrastructure or some efficient infrastructure in place. So a data science team by itself uh, will not be able to build something like this very, very quickly. Uh, you need a lot of software engineers to provide it. And a data scientist, together with a statistician and a software engineer who will help with, say, like coding in Scala, Spark, and so on, they uh, will typically sit somewhere here be be between the data that is delivered um, and between back delivery of the results. So, so at the place where data is analyzed, this is one particular architecture. It's obviously just an example, so you don't have to have it this way. It doesn't have to be like this is optimized for streaming. You still may want to use it in a batch mode. Um, it, it doesn't matter. These are details. But the point is that you will want to have an infrastructure, proper infrastructure to feed the data, pipeline the data, to have um, the storage for the data, to have the processing power for the data, so that the data science team can just focus on developing uh, the algorithms. So looking at the data and developing maybe production quality code, but the production quality code they develop will be somewhere here and not the overall framework. Uh, otherwise, it will again take ages and to, to be quick, you need them to focus on the data science part, uh, but also have a lot of support from the rest of the company. And this is often actually a bottleneck. And I experience it now, we are working with this at Artform. Um, and I experienced it also at Yahoo, where we had collaborations. I worked in Norway, but we had collaborations in the US and we had to use their stuff to, to run data on the, run analysis on the grid. We had to use their stuff to actually transfer the data from one place to another on some sort of data, um, data highway. And without proper support, things just go stale. So you can have fantastic insight into the data, but you're not able to deploy anything because it takes ages. So this, for, for your data science to be agile, you need to have the infrastructure and people who help you to uh, run your stuff on this infrastructure efficiently. Um, and here's a distinction that you will find people talking about, and I'd like to uh, find some balance between the positions like data engineer, data analyst, data scientist. This is a little bit of my uh, own view and of course not everybody will agree with this but in principle, um, so the data scientist is the person that we're talking about, so it's a person who takes data as input and develops insight into what the data might be, what the data might provide, builds models that somehow correspond, uh, idealize the, the, the domain and 
can be used then to uh, get particular results from, from new data in the future. Um, and so data scientist essentially works with getting insight from the data. And the delivery is, is models, broadly speaking. So it can be uh, in the form of software, it can be in the sort form of report with formulas, for example, which would say how to uh, compute results given data. But, but the core is insight. Now, um, this obviously has to be run uh, now that we are scaling up and entering, or having entered already, the big data uh, world. So this needs to be done efficiently. It needs to be implemented with reliability, low latency, high throughput, and whatnot. And typical data scientists will not have the skills and experience to implement the models that way. Again, you may find such people, but it's, it is difficult. Um, I have the team uh, in Copenhagen who, who will code with Python and those different libraries like Pandas for, uh, for numerical um, computing and uh, scikit-learn for machine learning. We have people who can do coding in R with different libraries, but it will never, ever be production quality. We actually did have some R code running in production, but that's, that's extreme hackery and, and it's very error prone and you will never advise, you're never advised to, to, to do it like that. So we need people who can implement these models in a proper way and people who can take care of uh, building a pipeline for the data from, from, from the original data, raw data that arrives from the customers, internal or external, doesn't matter. So the data that arrives has to be fluently, smoothly, transferred, processed, pre-processed, stored, aggregated before uh, the data scientist can access it and work with it. And now of course we can discuss whether the data scientist should be responsible for uh, getting the data from the databases or is the data engineer's role. There is some fuzziness and overlap, but in principle working with the data itself, not getting insight, but the data, taking care of the data, where it is, how it is stored, how it is structured and so on, will be more of the data engineer role. And then um, to actually present insights for some particular data set. So say we have data that we work on, the data scientist is looking for insights, getting getting his mind around the models and producing some models. And now those models, of course, are not produced just because someone wants a model, but they are produced because someone wants to use this model to get insight into a particular um, scenario from, from a customer. We have this data and we want to predict something or we have this data we want to find, let's say, outliers. We want to look for problems. We want to uh, segment the data and, uh, and so on and, and visualize to the customer to be able to claim, well, you need to pay more to us because then we will help you achieve better results. And uh, that typically would be a role for a data analyst who, um, who does not so much of a scientific uh, mindset, but more um, of applicative, let's say, mindset. So, so, so the data analyst will take the data, um, the models, the framework, built by the data scientist, will apply this to the data and produce uh, particular results, numbers, plots, graphs, and so on, that can go out to the, uh, to the customer. And the data analyst will also ideally have some more understanding of the, uh, of the business. Of course, this is, again, this is a very rough distinction. Um, in small companies, you will, uh, you will have uh, the data scientist or whatever you call this person doing most of these tasks, but then you run the risk that it won't be agile. Uh, because typically this person will be lacking at some of the skills of the other roles that you would ideally feel with persons, people skilled right there. Uh, and that's also what we experience right now um, is that like data, proper data engineer support is essential for agile work of the data science. Uh, we had problems like data scientists almost getting on idle 
because they can't get the right data they need for the analysis. We know what we want to achieve. We have a roadmap of tasks to, to reach, to, to complete. Uh, we have the right expertise in the business. We have the right expertise in data analysis, building a recommender system, for example, or building a forecast, time series forecast. We have all this, but they are idle because the data is not there. Well, the data is somewhere there. The data is in the systems, but then it's in Kafka, it's in Redis, it's in Vertica, it's in this and that. And a data scientist can jump into it and spend some time on um, installing the right drivers and learning how to query the sets and so on. But it won't work very well. It won't be agile. And just some quick examples before we go into the uh, question sessions of uh, things that I, I don't consider proper agile data science. So, for example, on my laptop, the results were better. You never refer to your particular machine or your particular uh, <laughs> system and so on. The results, if you build a model, the model has to be deployable easily on a cluster, this cluster, that cluster, and it has to repeat the same analysis and give the same results. Of course, some things are random, but then we take care as much as possible about randomness. The code runs successfully in PyCharm? No, sorry. We don't build, we don't run code through PyCharm. You can do it on your laptop when you experiment, but the code, again, has to be wrapped in a proper build system so that it's easy to say something like Maven compile, install, or SBT, uh, or Gradle, or whatever else you use. Um, change some parameter in, in some line of the script. This is, again, unacceptable uh, because just going through the script through, say, a couple hundred lines and trying to find where this parameter is set, how do I change it, it takes time, it takes effort, and, uh, and it's not agile. So you have to construct the software, again, properly so that everything that is not that is changeable in principle should be easily changeable. There should be a proper API for using the models, proper interface with documentation. Um, another, another issue is like proper versioning of both the external libraries that you use and the code that you built. And again, I find that people working with data science that come from academic background, they just don't have a sense for it. Well, they maybe use Git because they need to re send their code somewhere, so it's not just on their laptop, and when the laptop crashes, the code is no longer anywhere. But it's usually just linear commits. And um, it does not, again, give you a proper versioning, a proper review process, and so on. Um, it's one thing that you need to teach people a lot. It makes no sense to try linear regression. Well, yes, it does. Uh, not always, of course, not you can't solve everything with linear regression. Uh, linear regression is one of the simplest approaches to, to, uh, to build a model. But often, yes, you can, even if the model will be lame, it will be very inaccurate, um, too simplistic, it often is, but at least you can show progress. So that's kind of a little bit of marketing as well. As a data scientist, you may not like using linear regression because you know this is bullshit. But it may not be completely bullshit. It, it still uh, allows you to provide some predictions which are acceptable. You know you can do better, but you can do better later. But now you just use linear regression and you deliver something. Um, I can tell you how to feed the model again. This is about interfacing and documentation and so on. So this is also agile. You need to uh, to be able to change things on the way. You need to have the previous steps properly documented so that you can always come back and reevaluate how we did it, why we did it. Oh, well, no, I need to read this 500 uh, lines of code to, to first understand what I was doing uh, three weeks ago. Um, recompiling LaTeX reports, yes. Well, now time for questions. Is very dependent from the 
industry or content from where data originates, or it doesn't matter at all, and you only look at the data. Maybe you can give examples. Um, so the question is whether whether the role of a data scientist, who the data scientist should be, depends on the industry, kind of. That's the question, or. Um, so I guess obviously the uh, what what the team should be will depend will depend on the industry will depend also on the company size. I think this will be the major factor actually the size of the company whether you can afford to have a multiple competence team or you just need a one person data science team to do most of the stuff whether you have a very complicated system where lots of different uh, flavors of data are stored and you need more people to be able to handle it and, and support or whether it's pretty simple you have one sort of data like say I don't know uh, uh, web data on clicks and so on and it's very simple and you, you can again handle it with, with just one person understanding both the business what you want to achieve business wise what the structure of the data is, where it is stored, and build a simple model, and then just one data scientist can handle it, obviously. Um, I would say that's the major, major criterion, is the size and the variety of data. So it's like the three Vs of, of big data, right? One of them is the variety. So the volume is about scaling, velocity is again about latencies and so on, but uh, the major criterion would be variety. So how many different types of data you need to handle? And then, then you have one person or you scale up the, uh, the team. Anyone else? I have a question about BI. Uh, oh. I'm look, I, when I look at your presentation, you divide that agile team of data science should be from, uh, how to say, more one more programmer, one more analyst, and, uh, and scientist. Uh, I'm working in BI. I'm BI Which developer. is business intelligence, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually working all this stuff. We are programming, transferring data, uh, analyzing how it should be stored, how it should be delivered. Uh, so my question is, mm, and we, uh, is there possible to work agile in BI? Um, it's a good question, but I'm sure yeah. I'm not sure if it's a question to me because I don't work in <laughs> BI. I have uh, actually little to do with BI. Um, I don't have the proper understanding of what BI is to answer this sort of question. Does it make sense to you? So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm more of a technical person, um, interested in uh, in software engineering and data science and BI is kind of like using data science but very concretely to, 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 to analyze yeah it's just like simple reporting yeah yeah um, well simple reporting is essentially you know y y once you have all the pipelines in place um, it's it's hardly to do anything with data science proper, right? It's just summarizing the data in a way. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure I answered your question, and as I say, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the right person to answer that. I could kind of get in into that question because mm -hmm. I also work Good. with Adform, and basically our business intelligence guys to use the same data as data science guys. Well, data science used more raw data than business intelligence guys, and we were working in agile fashion. 
basically in sprints in small steps. So yeah, it's possible to do that, but once again, you need a good layer of engineers underneath all that so that you could get that data fast enough and uh, don't crash the system when you take a lot of data and do all that. So yeah, it's possible, but you need developers. You just can go around that. Okay, so. You may not need them on your data, data uh, analysis team but you still need them somewhere in the company as, as a service. Yeah, because the data comes from some technology, let's say Vertica, and uh, you still need those guys to kind of get you the data from that source uh, in some case. So do we have any more questions? How many of you actually uh, work anywhere close to, to data or data science, data analysis? Okay, so it's a relatively new field to you. You, you. you want to introduce data science, you want to be more data-based in your work. That's kind of what happens with, with a lot of companies is now transfer to, to data-based decisions. So sooner or later you're going to see someone calling themselves data scientist at work and then doing some exotic stuff, reading research papers and and not producing anything. Okay. So let's give a round of applause for our presenter. Yeah.